Hi, Eric from Rise. In our last video, Dat talked about the concepts and best practices related to running LM evaluations and using the LM as a judge technique. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run an evaluation using our Rise Phoenix library, which is designed for speed and ease of use with explanations included. So let's look at an example first of what we're trying to accomplish. This is Phoenix, our open source package for tracing an LM application. Uh, and these are example traces of a chatbot built on top of our docs. We have more than uh, 900 traces here, and we've already run an LM evaluation for Q&A correctness, which checks whether the output fully answers the question, and hallucination, which checks whether the output contains any information not available in the reference documents. Uh, and the hallucination rate for this application is quite high. So let's filter for hallucinations only. So now you can kind of you can see the evaluation to the right hand side. Let's look at this example uh, asking a question about uploading multiple masks for the same image in a segmentation use case. So we are saying that yes, it is possible to upload. We look at the evaluation for both Q&A correctness and the Q&A correctness eval says the reference text does not have anything related to the answer to the question and it does not uh, answer it correctly. And then same thing with hallucination where it makes up the information. So let's actually go look at the LM call where you can see uh, here in the user message, we have the context that was attached. And you can also see in the retriever which uh, documents were retrieved, which are put into here. There's nothing about multiple masks in the segmentation here. Um, there's some random information about model versions and about ranking. So you can kind of you you can use evaluations as the starting point for understanding where your application went wrong. And in here we retrieve the wrong documents and we also did not have the right prompt to check whether or not the context information was relevant. And instead we just answered the question directly. So that's one of the flaws of also using um, a, a smaller or less robust model. Uh, I would bet that if we used GPT 4.0, that it would at least not hallucinate and answer, sorry, I don't know. So using evaluations, you can find where your application went wrong and why it went wrong with easy to use explanations. So let's now run an evaluation for our own application. I have a haiku writer and I'm trying to judge whether the haiku that has been created follows all the rules of a haiku. Very, very simple application. Uh, and so we're gonna try running this evaluation end to end. In order to do that, we need to follow a few steps. Uh, the first is set up your environment and run the Phoenix UI. The second is add traces by running your LM application. A uh, third is determine which traces you wanna run an evaluation for. Fourth is actually run the evaluation, and then fifth is go look at it. So a uh, pretty simple set of steps. So let's go uh, through this notebook together. Um, so I've done some of these steps uh, already just to, for the sake of time, uh, which is install these packages and add my open AI API key. So let's start the Phoenix UI. Okay, <laughs> the UI has now been uh, created. Uh, if you need to use Chrome for these types of notebooks uh, for the links to work, so just keep that in mind. So now we have a, a Phoenix environment running in our notebook. So the next thing we need to do is actually register our tracer and we're going to be using the uh, Arise OTEL package, which is a nice uh, syntactic sugar package that allows you to avoid a lot of boilerplate code and then we're going to add the OpenAI instrumenter, which maps the LM calls that are made uh, during this uh, run, uh, and then logs all the attributes correctly to the Phoenix instance. So we're going to start by setting up our tracer, and then we're going to run our GPT 3.5 call to write a haiku. 
So now you have an example, quiet sunset, colors, nature's masterpiece. Beautiful. So uh, the next step is we actually have to go back to the Phoenix application and figure out which spans we actually run, want to run an evaluation for. So I've added a, a few lines of code um, for completeness sake. You could probably just get, there's right now there's only two tra one trace here. So if you just got all the traces and ran an evaluation, that would be enough. But let's say you actually wanted to only uh, get uh, spans for the last seven days or last one day or last hour. And then also, if you're going to be continuously running evaluations, you want to only get spans that don't have the evaluation already attached. So I'm going to be run this code. So that way we have our data frame for all the spans. Now let's run an evaluation. The first thing uh, we have here is an import to make it so the evaluations run faster in a notebook if you're running more than one. Uh, next, we have some setup for the API key as well as the eval model that we'll be using. We'll be using GPT-40 because it's more accurate than smaller, faster models. You want to use a more state-of-the-art model for your evaluations. Uh, because for your, you want to use a more state-of-the-art model for your evaluations. Uh, next, you set up your custom template for the evaluation. Here, I am evaluating whether or not the haiku actually respects the rules for haiku writing with five, seven, and five syllables, and not longer than three lines. And then uh, we ask it to print out what the actual output should be of whether or not it was valid or invalid. And then uh, you, this is where this will actually feed into the LLM classify function later in this Rails function, which is, hey, this is the actual output of whether or not it was valid or not. Uh, next, we'll also be uh, mapping the output message or the output dot value that corresponds with this uh, content here. Uh, and the reason is, is because as we log the output messages, uh, the output messages contains a lot of information. Let's look at an example here. Uh, we'll go to the attributes tab where you can see within the attributes LM output messages is the actual content of the haiku, which is under message.content uh, within this JSON dictionary. So in order to access that value for the evaluator, you have to go and fetch the information from that part of the attributes and then map it to the output so that we can use it for the evaluator. Uh, next, we use this uh, helper function called using project. So that way, when we use this LM classify function, which then does an open AI call, it doesn't add that trace to the existing project. It adds it to a different one. So we can have the LM calls in one project and then the evaluation calls in a different one. Uh, and then here is the helper function that we're using from Phoenix, which we've written called LM classify which then, uh, based off of your custom template, decides which uh, of the outputs can the classifier actually predict for this eval. And these are the two, whether it's valid or invalid, and we've also asked it to provide explanation equals true. So let's run this guy. So we say that this is valid. So let's go look at the results here. We'll refresh our screen. Ah, right. We haven't logged the evaluation yet is the thing. So we have to run this line to actually add the evaluation to uh, the UI and we're naming it is haiku valid or invalid. So let's run this line right here. So there we go. Here it is, is it's under is haiku is valid. 
And then here's the explanation. So it is three lines. Uh, the first line is five syllables, the second line is seven syllables, and the third one is five. So it meets all of the requirements. It is a valid haiku. So here's where you can see the results and we've finished the tutorial. Um, so in our next video, we're gonna show you how to run an online evaluator where Arise runs evaluations automatically as your LM application is being used, uh, as opposed to needing to run it on your own machine and run all this code. You, we can actually run it on your behalf in the cloud. So uh, see you next time. Happy building.